Okay, yes. Hello everyone, my name is Banyan Pat, and I'm a um, 11th grade student at Northridge International School, Cambodia. Okay, and the major issue that I want to talk about today is the development of technology that is responding to the issues of climate change that's happening today. Point at the screen. Point at the screen? Okay. Oh, thanks. Ah. So, what is climate change? Climate change refers to the rise in average surface temperature on Earth that's recorded over a long period of time. Um, currently, the consensus, although there are people who don't believe in this, is that the cause of climate change is due to the extra emission of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, causing what is called the enhanced greenhouse effect. <clears throat> see? <laughs> as you can see in this, um, in this graph, as the one particular greenhouse gas, which is carbon dioxide, as it increases, the, energy, uh, the average temperature also increases along with it too. Okay, climate change is having a profound impact on um, the rainfalls and droughts that's happening in Cambodia. In fact, this year's drought has been caused by the El Nino weather pattern. However, according to the government, this year's drought has been described as the worst. The worst. How worse is it? According to um, the UN's World Food Program and UNICEF, <clears throat> The, uh, the economic stability of average Cambodian household has taken a huge toll during this period in which many families have been driven into low income um, brackets and very high debts. In fact, the debts among low income families are now um, by the end of that period values at an average of $1,200. Additionally, two thirds of the country's provinces ran out of water for drinking and irrigation. Uh, so the farmers, they had to migrate to other provinces to find work or even move abroad to work on construction booms in other countries. Additionally, schools in, uh, schools in Cambodia are also being affected. In Narakanakiri, in the far north, um, 136 out of 203 primary schools have suffered from water shortages leading to huge absences in teachers and students. This is, this, all these effects is ridiculous, but however, but scary enough, this effect of climate change is still intensifying. So, who's the cause for all this climate change? Well, it's all of us. As individuals, we want to live our lives in the fullest. And don't get me wrong, okay? We want to live in a good house, with a good AC, we want a new phone, new gadget, new Lamborghini, uh, we want very good internet where we can't really find in Cambodia. Yes, we all we want all of those stuff, but these stuff must be produced at the um, using energy. So, what are the types of energy sources? <clears throat> energy sources includes uh, non-renewable energy sources, which are energy sources for which there's a finite supply of, and it cannot be replenished in a short period of time. Non-renewable energy sources include fossil fuels and nuclear fuels. Fossil fuels in particular work by combusting uh, fuel, which, uh, however, this releases greenhouse gases that contribute to the enhanced greenhouse effect, and this is something that we do not want. So therefore, obviously, to um, combat this, we should be using renewable energy sources, which are sources of energy for which uh, that can be replenished in a short period of time. One, uh, one particular renewable energy source that I want to talk about is solar, ener uh, solar energy. Solar cells, also called photovoltaic cells, function by using sunlight in the form of photons to create electricity, voltage. <coughs> so this is how it exactly works. Consider an atom. When a photon strikes an atom, it knocks an electron loose. 
this loose electron um, has a movement. This movement of electron causes um, an electric current. And this effect is called the photoelectric effect. In fact, solar cells, they utilize this photoelectric effect in order to create energy, electricity. So how does it do it? So solar cells are made of semiconductors, especially silicons, which have been treated to have a positive polarity on one end and a positive um, and a negative uh, polarity on the other end. When joined together with electrical conductors attached on both ends, <clears throat> uh, electricity uh, from the photoelectric effect can be uh, will be conducted by this electric current. I mean, the electric circuit. Um, this allows for us to use this electricity for utility. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of solar energy and PV cells? Solar energy is very abundant. We have access to it for another 6.5 billion years, according to NASA. In fact, every day we receive 120,000 terawatts of sunlight. That is 20,000 times more energy than needed to supply the entire world. And additionally, we can't overconsume solar energy. I mean, yeah, doesn't that make sense? How do you overconsume the sun? Yeah. Um, PV, uh, PV cells, PV modules. Modules are just um, an array of cells that are grouped together. Um, have relatively lower energy payback periods. So it takes from half a year to 1.8 years um, to pay back the energy cost. How, um, compared to coal, which will take one to two years, or even nuclear low-grade uranium, which is 14 years. And uh, additionally, it has an expected uh, lifetime that is comparable to other energy sources. How, uh, so this sounds very amazing. I mean, if solar cell technology is that good, then why doesn't anyone in Cambodia not want to use this technology? This is because uh, this, the people here in Cambodia are not as aware of this technology due to these following disadvantages. When you exclude all of the incentives, all of these subsidies on um, solar cell technology, the implementation, the installation of solar cells and energy storage for it is very expensive, really expensive. <clears throat> uh, solar energy needs intense sunlight to function. Uh, therefore, it cannot operate in overcast days, especially in Cambodia, where half of the year um, is very overcast days are very unpredictable. So, therefore, solar energy houses, therefore, PV cells are not a good choice in meeting what is called the baseload energy demand, which is the required, the, which is the required, which is the minimum amount of energy that a that a power su supply is required to produce. Hmm. Additionally, a PV cell has to absorb so much energy that it absorbs so little. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's consider the sun. The sun emits sun, uh, sunlight of um, varying energy. However, solar cells can only use a small portion of that energy uh, that is greater or equal to the, um, equal to the energy that is required to start to start the photoelectric effect. This is given by the band gap. And in this graph too, the theoretically, the maximum efficiency of a solar cell, the best solar cell that you can find is 33%. And this uh, limit is called the shockley Kaiser limit. However, technological innovations are always being made in the solar power industry. Consider this graph. From 1977 to 2015, the um, price of solar energy has decreased from $76 per watt, I mean, who wants to pay for that, uh, to 30 cents. This graph in particular is evidence for what is uh, for Swanson's law, which states that the cost of solar electricity decreases by 20% for each doubling of the global, uh, global manufacturing capacity. And the reason why 
this, uh, this price drop could occur is due to the innovations that are being made in the efficiency of these solar cell technologies. And these innovations are being made because the doubling, the increase of the global manufacturing capacity triggers competition within the solar power industry. Therefore, it increases the need to innovate and to increase the efficiency of solar energy. Speaking of innovation, scientists at MIT had broken the SQ limit. How? They used thermovoltaic cells. So instead of dissipating the heat, which is 47% of the wasted energy, that's huge. Um, the, uh, these scientists um, use all that heat energy and turns it into electricity by using nanophotonic crystals that are, in, that are integrated into a system of carbon nanotubes. Okay, I know that this is very bulky and the uh, system is indeed very complex, but the function is rather simple. When these components are heated to a certain temperature, the carbon absorbs all the photons energy into solar heat and well into heat. And this solar heat causes the nanophotonic crystals to release very specific energy of light that corresponds to the PV cells peak efficiency. Uh, as you, and this is an example of a very super efficient solar cell. Remember just now when I was talking about baseload energy demand in which uh, solar cells are not reliable in fulfilling that job? With this innovation, um, so, uh, with this innovation, a solar cell can absorb so much energy out of so little sunlight. And this is going to be very useful in operating in rainy conditions and um, cloudy conditions too. So therefore, once implemented, this will make solar cell technology a more viable option for meeting baseload energy demand. So, now let's answer the question. With all these innovations that are going on, has science done enough to solve climate change? Well, you all know that science has not yet done enough, but however, it only seems like that because the implementation and innovation of renewable energy sources just can't seem to offset the carbon emission. However, remember this thing, uh, remember this, science is definitely accelerating on the right track. Consider the Kai identity. Well, that's a lot of information. Here's a simple <laughs> one. <laughs> As the world population increases, the global economic production also increases. Oh, come on. <laughs> Therefore, uh, since the global production, uh, global economic production increases, the energy, more energy is being consumed to, to fuel this economic growth. However, to minimize costs of producing uh, these, uh, for producing, um, uh, improvements in energy efficiency of existing technologies uh, are being made, which decreases the energy consumed or energy intensity. However, as we all know it in the present, since we're emitting excess carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is causing climate change, um, we are gradually switching to um, renewable energy sources, non-fossil fuel-based alternatives, and improving the carbon efficiency of fossil fuels. So therefore, the carbon emission, um, carbon dioxide emission should decrease as well. In fact, in the future, since there is not actually a very big demand for this, the carbon emission will reach a near zero at some point. But this is only a projection. <coughs> so what now? How do we reach this zero emission vision? Well, this is done through innovation uh, and improving the way we produce uh, energy. For example, in the case of solar cells, we can improve the way, I mean, we can change the weather, okay? I mean, hey, Ray, please, um, please stop right now. He can't do that. Well, well, in fact, we can actually change the way we produce these solar cells by making them more efficient. 
However, this won't stop the fact that people in Cambodia still aren't keen and aren't aware of this technology. So therefore, it all depends on how we all as a community get together and enforce STEAM. How much we can fight climate change is not dependent on what the scientists do, okay? Scientists, there's so little scientists compared to the world uh, population, okay? It doesn't matter what the scientists do. It ma um, the, w the way we fight climate change is to bring everyone together. And by doing everything together, collaborating, uh, collaborating as a community, we can build a sustainable uh, green energy future right here and right now, starting from today. So, what can you do? Well, be a part of that change. You can reduce your carbon footprint. But, well, be honest, okay? Do you guys think that you actually are in decreasing your carbon footprint? I bet not. Okay? However, you sh uh, people should be getting together to do more service projects. In ISPP, you have the Environmental Action Committee, who has successfully proposed um, for the installment of solar cells in the school. And this is, the point of this is to promote uh, better practice of better um, practice of, uh, yeah, better green energy practices. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and I am the leader of the NIST STEAM club at my school. I do projects to motivate students' interest in STEAM. Um, this is because we need to get more students more involved in STEAM in order for them to become more aware and uh, and more, uh, more aware in order to make them to dare to innovate and deliver the changes that we need for today and tomorrow. Um, so if there's like one question, I would like to leave this question for you. What will you guys do for tomorrow? Yes, thank you.